Hello Cool Worlds channel, I'm Dr. Sarah Ballard. I'm a Torres Fellow for Exoplanetary Science at MIT. I want to use this time to talk about one of the things I think is most interesting in exoplanet science right now, and it has to do with white dwarf pollution. So you can see behind me kind of this artistic rendering of what looks like tiny particulates in spiraling onto some mysterious object. It is funny to think about how these dying stars are actually one of our best chances to really understand what planets are made of. Let me explain why that's true. So usually when we're trying to probe uh, what exoplanets are made of, we have information about the size of the planet and we have information about the mass of the planet. So we have some understanding of its density. Is it similar to the density of rock? Is it more similar to the density of water or iron and so on? Those things basically explain all of the solar system planets. But when it comes to worlds around other stars, with only a density measurement, there's always some uncertainty about what the true composition is. Our only opportunity for understanding that composition in more detail is with particulates, maybe asteroid-sized things that are falling onto the surface of dead stars called white dwarfs. The reason why this technique works is because White dwarfs are pristine objects. They're the core of dead stars, which are so gravitationally powerful that they pull anything out of the atmosphere which is heavier than hydrogen on a timescale of days. So what that means is if you look at a white dwarf and its atmosphere appears to be polluted, what that means is that something fell onto that white dwarf even days ago. This is basically the only way that we know what planetesimals could be made of because we can look at the atmosphere of a white dwarf and say necessarily something fell onto the surface of this white dwarf. There were such and such many atoms of magnesium, iron, oxygen, and this way you can actually put together an understanding of what this thing was that fell onto the surface of the white dwarf. So a good example of this, some of my favorite work about it um, was by a former uh, UCLA graduate student. Her name is C. Shu, and she likes to introduce this topic by talking about what human beings are made of. We are actually very different chemically from our planet Earth. We're mostly made of oxygen, carbon, and planet Earth, in contrast, is very carbon poor. And so it really behooves us to ask, are other planetesimals similar to Earth or dissimilar? What studies have found looking at the polluted atmospheres of white dwarfs is that most planetesimals look very similar to what Earth itself is made out of. It leads us to believe that perhaps the same processes which brought forth the solar system planets and, and the moons in the solar system are at work around other stars as well. It makes me wonder whether there might be, for example, multiple generations of planets. So I've mentioned that white dwarfs are sort of the remnants of what were formerly um, living stars. And yet, if there's still dust particulates and planetesimals in orbit around them, could it be possible to have a second generation of planet formation? Could it be possible for life to evolve a second time? It's these kinds of questions that make white dwarfs, I think, one of the most interesting lenses for studying planets, even though I think they're the candidate least likely, um, since what we know about planets by and large has to do with planets around stars like the sun, uh, living stars. So um, this particular figure, actually, uh, the reason why I liked it so much was because of recent work, actually, by Andrew Vanderberg. This is a press image uh, from his particular work, and he demonstrated that this hypothesis, this understanding that we were developing, that it's indeed particulates of rock that are falling onto the surfaces of white dwarfs that explain the so-called polluted atmospheres. That was just an assumption, a very strong assumption, until he found evidence for transiting hunks of rock actually passing in front of a white dwarf with NASA's K2 mission. Um, so I suppose a good way to close is sort of in pie chart form to try to imagine if Earth is made of such and such a percent of magnesium silicate and so much iron and so much water, what do these other things look like? How does their pie chart look? And if you look at this figure uh, right here from Z Shu's paper, you can see that for most of the planetesimals that have been found to accrete onto white dwarfs, they look generally to first order 
pretty similar to Earth, and that gives me uh, hope, indeed, for the future of understanding what planetesimals are made of in detail. Uh, so that's my video for the Cool Worlds Lab here, run by Professor David Kipping, uh, a friend of mine and colleague at Columbia. And if you're interested in my own work, uh, which is actually not about white dwarfs, I just think this stuff is really cool, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Hubba Hubble. And uh, if you're interested in this channel, please do subscribe for more great videos from the Cool Worlds Lab here at Columbia. Until next time.